So, uh, welcome back to a new episode of uh, Teak and Mead. Um, it's kind of a special episode. I have my friend from Texas. Uh, this is Sean. Hi. He's joining us today. Um, <clears throat> we've got four different meads from a meadery that we've that Craig's drank from a few times. Uh, we found it at our local Total Wine. Um, so we also have visual aids because we cannot say these names and we do apologize there's only one we can figure out um, so I'm just gonna hold up name cards and uh, go from there so the actual metery is uh, we, we think it's pronounced as Donsk Mute but we're not sure so we're just gonna go with that <clears throat> uh, so first up about the metery um, it's located on the outskirts of Billund. Um, that's, it's in Denmark, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it's a stone's throw from the expansive Jutland Heaths. Um, it's a traditional brewery, which has brewed mead since 1994, on the basis of old meads and with an uncompromising focus on quality and ingredients. It is the endless stories and myths about mead which still inspire this meadery to create products that combine the ancient brew craft and tradition with a modern eye for quality and taste. The company is run by Michael with help from a few in production and sales. Next to the brewery in Billen lays a shop and a cozy taste area where mead thirsty people can quench their thirst in the golden drops. This meadery also organizes regular events and tastings in their rooms where there is also the opportunity to hear stories about brewing mead told by the brewmaster Michael. So first up we have Vikings Blood. The only one we know how to pronounce. Because it actually looks like the name. Um, in order to establish this mead they have combined the traditional brew with dried hibiscus and in addition to the color the spice adds an aromatic and floral aftertaste to the mead like a good what is this Madeira it comes in at 19% alcohol by volume so these are a lot stronger than uh, some of the ones that we've tried in the past um, <clears throat> so and we we've drank a little bit of this one already but uh, the cool thing is it comes in these I don't know, clay yeah clay bottles um, so you can actually get them refilled theoretically um, if you don't want to do that, then you just use it as a collector's item, which is also cool. So. And these are a little thicker as well than what we're used to uh, used to showing on the channel. It almost comes out like a uh, kind of like a syrup. Yeah. In a way, um, it's very very different texture. So there you go. So yeah, if you look, it's got that uh, very beautiful gold color. It's it's almost kind of like a light tea. Yeah. Um, and when you swirl it around, it'll it sticks to the glass for some time. Um, He's just diving right in. <laughs> you can definitely smell um, a little bit of citrus and hibiscus. It's very sweet, very smooth. Mm -hmm. um, it coats the tongue very nicely. Oh yeah, and you can taste the alcohol. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, uh, is it, that nineteen percent kicks in at the end. And what's what's scary is these are not their strongest that they have. They make one, and I have no idea how to pronounce it, but it is a twenty-one point eight percent for their highest. And that's not one that we have today. Um, we may try that one some other time. They didn't have it at the the total wine. We'll have to search it. Yeah, kind of reminds me of a kind of like children's cough, cough syrup in a way. Yeah, but good. The, the thickness, but good yeah. cough syrup. Yeah. So. Next up, we have. I don't know. Yep. That so that's an L. I don't. Is an L? That's an L. Because I was gonna call it a GI, but um, I don't know how to pronounce it. But it apparently it's a G and an L. 
uh, Donsk Mead. Uh, it's to, and it says to create a nuanced mead, they have added ginger. The spice creates a slightly spicy, aromatic, sweet, and semi-dry mead, which is reminiscent of sherry, and is based on a Danish 1700 century recipe. It also comes in at 19% alcohol by volume. Ah, oh, I love that pop. A little this bit one's lighter. paler. Yeah. Still has that kind of syrupy, thick wine pour to it. Alrighty. So once again, it's a little, like we said, it's a little thinner. It doesn't stick to the glass as much as the Viking's blood. But uh, still got a little bit of that syrupiness to it. That light. It's not very, so it's not as pungent. Um, you would think that the ginger would come out a little bit more in the smell, but it really doesn't um, compared to the uh, the other one that we tried in the past from Gronfell. Yeah. Got a slight ginger aftertaste. Mm-hmm. Just, just slightly. Yeah, if you, if you like ginger but don't like it a whole lot, this would be a good one for you. Yeah, I'm still not a huge fan of uh, ginger. I like it, just not that much. Uh, the next one is comes in a white bottle. It's called Viking Gernes Mude. So, Mude is essentially their word for me. Um, they have added hops to it. Um, creates a slightly spicy, aromatic, sweet, and semi-dry mead, which is reminiscent of a white port wine. So, you may have to spit this one out if it's, I don't know. We'll see how much it kicks. Yeah. So, just as a reminder, Craig is deathly allergic to uh, hops. and a touch. Uh, There you go. I don't feel like slamming an EpiPen into his leg right now. I don't feel like having one in my leg. That'd be a horrible way to start a weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's almost as it's about the same paleness as uh, the other one it's, it tastes like candy that's the taste I'm getting from it yeah I'm not getting much of a hoppy smell to it well wish me luck it's a little bit there taste wise yep Yeah, the hops kind of comes in at the end, but it's not like the main flavor that they were going for. Um, so if you like hops, if, if I mean, if you like hops, but it's not predominantly what you're trying to shoot for, then this would probably be a pretty good one um, for you. Uh, kind of like um, Gosnell's. Yeah. A little bit. The, yeah, um, that'd be a good comparison. The, the lemon one was really good. Um, They're all very sweet. Yeah. And yeah, then it's not really an overpowering sweetness either. It's you no, know, I, I guess you said it right. It's almost like a candy. Yeah, like a light, yeah. smooth sweetness to it. it. To me, it tastes like if you put like a green or yellow Jolly Rancher and some water and just let it sit there. Yeah. And then you drink it. That's what it tastes like. Yeah. But just has more bold and more flavor to it. Yeah, and, and, and alcohol. And alcohol, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and I already forgot forget, about all of our visual alcohol. aids. But uh, for those of you that can't read the labels on the bottles, this is our Viking's blood uh, visual aid. I spent so much time today making. I this. know. I know. See L. <laughs> it certainly does not look like an L. You can definitely but tell. But that's your hard their. Work. Uh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's, his hard work is so appreciated. And then the. Viking Aranes Mude. 
And then last but not least, we have their, I mean, I assume it's pronounced Ribe, but I'm not sure, it's their Ribe Mude. So we're just gonna go with that. Yep. And this one is also 19% yeah, alcohol by volume. It is brewed to celebrate Scandinavia's oldest town, Ribe, with their 1300 year anniversary. The recipe is made in collaboration with Ribe Viking Center and apple juice has been added to the mead to highlight a sense of fruit and give the mead slightly more acid in addition to the sweetness from the honey. It has honey, horse, and apple. So, here we go. Again, it's about as pale as some of the other ones, or the other two we've had today. Yeah, and um, not as thick as the Viking's blood. Maybe that's the outlier where it's... Maybe. You can smell the apple. Yeah, it's, sure. uh, it's not the... It doesn't seem like it's a focal point, but it's definitely there. Pork. Mm, cook well. that sucker with... Cook, cook the pork with this. Ooh. Get that apple -y flavor in the pork. Ooh. Yeah. It's like a, like an apple cider. A little bit. A little bit like you apple know what? cider. Waffle. Yeah, we're waffle. making waffle with this one. Yeah. So, you guys have already watched our waffle video, but um, I mean, we've got to make sure it's spice in the house. We can probably throw in there. But uh, we'll, we're gonna make wassail with that one, and uh, have a grand, have a grand old time. Oh yeah, <laughs> it uh, it doesn't feel like it has as much alcohol in it as it actually does. Like you hear, you can taste it. Yeah. You can taste it, and a lot of people get discouraged when it, when you know they hear or see nineteen percent. Most wines are anywhere between. I think 12 and 15 mm -hmm. yeah something like that so but they've made these they have blended these very very well to the point you like the alcohol isn't a disgusting aftertaste like some of the stuff that you can buy from the store where the alcohol is pretty much all that's left at the bottom of the, of the bottle yeah yeah well and, and these are only four of the I think they have seven and you can find out more information at their website, uh, www. How do you say that? Mute, mute, mute. Dot DK. Um, it's actually where I got all the information for the uh, for today's episode. Yeah. Um, one of them that we I think we found on their website. We may have to order it specifically from them. Was the the was it Club Pouster? Yeah, something like that. It's it's got weird letters and places that don't make sense but well, weird, weird for us Americans weird for we're not us, used to that yeah it's, it's not our usual forte well reading isn't no, normally our forte either so yeah hooked on phonics didn't work <laughs> <laughs> so uh but uh I don't know I mean any any kind of like last remarks you guys got um I mean I've I'm pretty impressed with these I mean for a more alcoholic mead than what we normally go for um, and the convenience factor of it being at Total Wine. Um, they're, they're, I mean, it's really good. I mean, this is the first time I've tried any, I mean, really any of these. Um, and I'm very impressed with them. You know what I just, what just went through my mind? Hmm. Playing Valhalla. Yeah, well, actually, looking at the back of the label, it comes with uh, serving suggestions, like um, pairings and stuff. So, like this one, right, as a serve over ice with fruit um, in a port wine glass. It's an excellent dessert wine, or for a winter warmer, heat the liquid without boiling and serve in a mug. Oh, it says that for all of them. Oh. <laughs> But um, maybe some natural yeast sediments on the bottom. So this one, uh, you might you might be chewing a little bit at the end, but it, it's good enough. It's that gonna it's be worth more it. towards the bottom of the bottle. But um, if you keep them in the in the, in your fridge, you'll be fine. <laughs> well, which one are you going after? Or actually, since we have a guest here, which one are you you John? want the horn? The one I'm going after the most. 
that I really enjoyed would have to be the Black and Guinness Mule, the white bottle, this one right here. Yep. I like the fact that this, like I said earlier in the video, it reminds me if you put it, like a yellow or green Jolly Rancher in water, just let it sit there for a little bit and then drink it. That's what exactly what this tastes like, but with alcohol. I really enjoy this the most. David? You're probably going to want the Vikings blood as well, I assume. Yeah, might as well. Get you going a little bit oh, here, okay. brother. Oh, thank you. Is this because I'm the guest? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, normally we have to pour our own. Oh. <laughs> Come on, you think he's going to be nice enough to pour mine? No, no. Not normally. <laughs> Trying to make sure that they're even. Ah, uh, it's fine. Oh, you killed the bottle. This is also one that we had open already. Oh, yeah. We didn't have a lot, though. We had a full one of these. Did we? Oh. Each. That was a long night. Anyway. Yeah. So, as always, stay safe. Be good to each other. And skull. 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 Drink responsibly. Yep. Mmm. Delicious. It really is. We need to get another bottle of that. My first time drinking yeah. out of a horn. Oh, really? Yeah, my first time drinking out of a horn. Well, welcome. You're going to want one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. They're very convenient replacements for cups. All right, let's get out of here. All right.